a boy, we played with something called Fürstene, which translates as fire rocks. One rock on its own is rather useless. But two rocks together? Two rocks together can give a magnificent spark. In that collision, there's energy, a spark. And this is a talk about rocks, energy, and the spark of innovation. Now behind me is an image of two rocks. The one on the left is coal. It's the largest source of energy for our planet. It's also our energy past. The one on the right is silicon. And if we make the right decisions, it can be our energy future. Silicon, like coal, can be a source of energy. But unlike coal, it's good for the planet. In fact, it is the planet. Most of our planetary crust is silicon dioxide. It's also the key material in over 90% of today's solar panels. And it can transform our energy mix. The way to make that happen is to lower the cost of solar. In a good location and a well-executed installation, solar is just seven cents per kilowatt hour. We got there through a remarkable international collaboration and 40 years of sparkling innovation. Seven cents per kilowatt hour is fantastic progress. It's not good enough. In order for solar to truly succeed, it must be cheaper than coal. So here's a question. Can we make solar cheap enough so we can pay for energy storage, cheap enough so we can use it in a location that's less than ideal? Well, take another look at that 40 years of data on the screen. The production of all high-technology goods, including solar, are subject to a learning curve. The truth is simple. The more we produce, the cheaper this will get. That same truth does not hold for fossil fuel. It must burn a fuel. Oil, gas, and the villain of today, coal, will always cost something. Sunshine is for free. What's not for free is this learning curve. That requires continuous innovation and continued deployment. My personal experience shows why this learning curve is going to continue. In 2008, together with a team of engineers from MIT and RPI, I uh, started a company to make solar cheaper than coal. And we knew that the silicon wafer in a solar panel was by far the most expensive component. So we set out to make it much cheaper. That turned out to be a lot harder than we thought, however. Our initial ideas didn't work. We had floods, we had explosions. The first wafers we produced, they looked more like the work of a deranged artist than a wafer. In fact, this is the sort of product that only a parent can love. <laughs> but we persisted. And seven years later, we now have radically reinvented the manufacturing process. We have a process that produces the wafers for a 30 energy, half the cost. We have installed solar panels with our wafers in Japan, Germany, the United States. And just last month, together with Governor Cuomo, we announced that we're going to build a second, much larger factory in upstate New York. Our team showed that the spark of innovation comes from the interaction between people. And our wafers, our wafers showed that the learning curve will continue. So solar has been growing at the rate of 30% uh, per year for the last couple of decades. If we choose to continue to grow at this rate, which is a Herculean and doable task, we will have installed enough solar to power the entire world by 2035. And the cost? The cost is going to be just two cents per kilowatt hour. The cheapest form of energy we've ever seen. The cost of energy is terribly important. But the two cents that really matters, the two cents that really matters are yours. So please take what you've learned about solar and offer your input to the energy conversation, because with your two cents, we can power the world for the very same price. <laughs>